Good afternoon. Welcome guys to the new video lessons on poetry. We have two important poems to learn. Today we'll have a glance at one of the remarkable poems while the German-born Jewish Israel poets Yehuda Amichai. The name of the poem is Anniversaries of War by Yehuda Amichai. Now here goes a quote. For the place where we are right, flowers will not grow in the spring by Amichai. He seems to be one of the uh, greatest of Israel's modern poets. Uh, certain biographical details about Amichai here. He is the first to write in colloquial Hebrew language, winner of the 1957 Shlonsky Prize, winner of the 1969 Brenner Prize, winner of the 1976 Bilek Prize, and winner of the fantabulous 1982 Israel Prize. And he was nominated for the Nobel Prize in Literature too. What are the unique features of Apichai's poetry? Now, uh, he was born in Germany to an Orthodox Jewish family and his German name was Ludwig Fofar. Foundation stone of Israelinists uh, seem to be seen in his, most of his poems. Writings, most of Amichai's writings, they belong to children's literature, short story, and theater. He is called as the world Whitman of Jerusalem. He believed that a peaceful coexistence was possible with Israel's Arab neighbors. Poetry characterized by colloquial language, self-depreciating humor, irony, and the autobiographical elements. Most of Amichai's poetry showcases a depth of emotion that is raw and introspective. Now you can see uh, the major themes that is seen in Amichai's poetry uh, seem to be Holocaust, of course. Uh, he was born to a Jewish family uh, and he had to migrate to Israel, Palestine, continue his life there. Then you can see uh, themes related to God, loss, love, idealism, war, and national uh, destiny, and you can see remarkable illusions of Old Testament. Telgath. See, Telgath uh, is a historical monumental city. It is considered to be one of the main five Philistine cities. And uh, this poem, Anniversaries of War, uh, envelopes or it's revolves around layers of history uh, according to Mitchell. That was also the home city of Goliath. You might be familiar with the story of uh, Goliath and David where an underdog situation operates where the, uh, the weaker uh, David defeats and destroys the monumental, I mean uh, the, the monstrous Goliath. A hub of different layers of history and different wars and various points of time in history is seen in this city. And this city is famous for its wine presses. Tell us Safi, uh, it, is also, it has also connotations with lots of white chalky cliffs. And this city, it carries biblical echoes too. Uh, the, the whole place of this city resonates the various wars fought in the Middle Ages. Uh, here you can see the picture of uh, the classical allusion to David and Goliath. Now comes our poem, stanza one. Tell death, I brought my children to the mound, where once I fought battles so they would understand the things I did do, and forgive me for the things I didn't do. The explanation. The poet here speaks of taking his children to the burial mounds in Tell death. The place is reminiscent mem memories of many wars fought by the speaker. This is in fact a revelation to the children of things that he has gone through. He wishes that they understand why he hasn't walked in such heinous wars and forgive him in their minds for the things he, he didn't intend to do. So there are things he did, there are things he didn't do. So he seems to bring the children to the mount. The mount is a burial place where lots of men, lots of soldiers, and lots of humans have gone, they are buried under the earth. And where once, uh, lots of uh, uh, heroic battles and wars were fought, and they would understand that the children, the next generation, they would realize, they would comprehend what I did do, and would forgive, and they would forgive me. I, I wish, I believe, they would forgive me for the things I didn't do. Here comes the stanza two, 
The distance between my striding legs and my head grows bigger and I grow smaller. Those days grow away from me. These times grow away from me. I'm in the middle without them on this mount with my children. Here goes the explanation. Between the striding legs, yes, the striding legs and my head, these are symbols, these are images where they symbolize the fleeting time where life moves on and my head that signifies its physical and external growth. So the speaker is admitting that his emotional and mental growth to be diminishing. The memories of his past life filled with moments of violence and incidents of brutalities seem to drift away from him when he says, I grow smaller, these days grow away from me. That is, these days, those days, past memories, everything, they are drifting away, they're drifting and drifting away from me. And these times, the present time, when he is in the Middle Age, in the moment, the point persona, now he's in the Middle Ages, he watches his life passes away from him with his children, the upcoming generation. So he is watching these mounds, he is watching these monuments, he is watching history with his children. We come to stanza three, where he speaks about a light, he speaks about nature. A light afternoon wind blows, that only a few people move in blowing wind. Bend down a little with the grass and the flowers, dandelions cover the mound. You could see, you could say, the dandelions, dandelions in multitudes. The explanation. Here, an explicit luxury of nature in these lines marks the poet's lyricism. Surviving both the harsh as well as the gentle experiences of life, only a few men learn to move towards in forward, if move forwards in the journey of life, yes. Not everyone can survive, not everyone can withstand the troubles and turmoils of life. Only few withstand that you call it survival of the existence. They bend, they lean, they stretch and they adapt to life situations. Dandelions, why dandelions? Why have Amitai used dandelions? They are flowers that symbolize emotional healing. They can endure any living condition and overcome every hardship by being so strong and being proud. So, comparing himself along with the rare ones, the few ones who could survive, who, who were the unique and distinct ones who could withstand the ravages of time and life to dandelions and the common rabble of people. All of us, we are normal, we are uh, usual, and a few among them are the rare gems who are able to survive and withstand the troubles, the, what do you say, the fleeting of time, the fleeting of the, the, the fleeting life experiences. Okay. Now we have the final stanza, this is stanza four, where he says, I brought my children to the mount, and they sat there, on his back and its side, uh, as in the poem by Samuel Ha Najid in Spain. Like me, a man of hills and a man of wars, who sang a lullaby to his soldiers before the battle. Yet, I did not talk to my heart, uh, heart as he did, but to my children. To the mount we were the resurrection, fleeting like the springtime, eternal like it too. Here goes the explanation. The poet wants his children to know about their history, the wars and the passage of time, both forwards and backwards. The day moves forward, time moves forward, but the poet moves backward in time. An expansive mood he recalls. Another great artist, that is Samuel Ibn Nagrila, a well-known Jewish poet, soldier, and statesman. The speaker identifies himself with Samuel Ha Najid, who also wrote on war and soldiers like him. The early poet, that is Samuel Ibn Nagrila, interacted to hearts through his art, while the speaker himself spoke to the children, suggesting the greatness of the earlier poet. The speaker ends by an assertion of life over death. Life is both fleeting and eternal as well. The speaker contemplates that he himself and his children, they are resurrected in this soil on this earth. The season of spring is passing away, but it will come back in another new cycle of seasons to which it belongs. So here you can see the resurrection of the poet and the children, and he compares himself to Samuel Ibn Nagrullah, another classic statesman, politician, grammarian, and poet, 
uh, of Israel. And he compares himself and he says that, of course, the earlier poet Samuel seems to be a much more better craftsman, much more greater poet, because he could speak to hearts of men uh, rather than himself. Now, he is taking his children, the next generation, to see, to look at life, to observe life, to contemplate on history. Queens, themes discussed by Amichai in this poem, that is journey through time, that is its striding legs, the growing life, the drifting past memories, everything, all these uh, gives you a feel, gives you an experience of the journey through time, through life. Moments marked by thoughts of war, he talks about everything, every incident, every event, anything and everything he speaks about, all these things are related uh, they have close affinity to the thoughts of war, battles, and violence. Life is fleeting and eternal uh, both ways. And the poem is an oblique learning experience where the poet takes the next generation, he talks to them, it's a didactic tone. And an ins you can see an introspection of a, a disturbed mind continually assessing his past acts in war. The poem closes with an optimistic note where you can see him asserting the value of life over death. And you can see the whole poem is a fusion of personal memory and collective history. So, uniqueness of Amichai's poetry, how different he is from the other Israel poets. Most widely, he was Amichai is the most widely translated Hebrew poet since King David. And he's considered, he's called and hailed as the shrewdest and most solid of poetic intelligences. His poems were real poems. They deal with a human response to reality and politics as part of reality, history in the making. The exploitation of indigenous stylistic resources is a common factor of Amichai's poetry and his sensitivity to the expressive sounds of the Hebrew words and his invent inventive puns, which you can see uh, in most of his works. Now, here you can see uh, uh, he is a representative man with the unusual gifts who, in telling, in telling his own story, also relates the larger story of his people. He talks about his personal experiences as well. He takes it towards a larger canvas that is the microcosm of the modern macrocosm. So guys, I would suggest you to learn anniversaries of war from a few different aspects. That is, you will have to look at the nature imagery, how uh, Amichai has spoken on nature in his stanza three, where he talks about a light afternoon wind, which is blowing and people uh, who are normal, who are usual, who uh, belong to the rabble of the crowd, which is move along with this blowing wind. And they bend down, they lean, they stretch, they realign, they reshape in themselves and adapt to the life situation, the harsh and the stark realities of life. And a few among them are just like dandelions. They are able to survive and withstand all the harsh realities, the troubles and turmoils of life. So in that way, you can look at the nature imagery which Amishai has portrayed in this poem. The next, uh, the next area which I would like you to focus on is the mood, the mood of the poem and the structure of the poem, uh, how he has uh, spoken about the history, how he spoke about time, the beating of time, the passage of time, how the attack of time, the attack of time on life, your external, your internal, your em emotional growth, your spiritual growth. He, he, uh, he, when he says that the time, the space between my striving legs and the air and my head is growing bigger, but then I'm growing smaller. So externally, a lot of changes happen to your physique, but then internally, spiritually, emotionally, what happens to your sentiments, what happens to your feelings and sensibilities while you grow old, while you grow, uh, while you age, and what happens, or how, what all changes and differences happen to you, your mind, your soul, and your body. With the passage of time so and another is the the historical uh, we have already uh, seen in the, collect the collective uh, history the historical illusions and the classic stories just like David and Goliath and his uh, illusion his reference to another classic poet that is Samuel the Nagrilla so all these things the historical background how the uh, the poem is set, the, how the poem is located, how he has placed it uh, in the backdrop of uh, history. So all these areas you need to focus for your examination. So um, 
So that's all for today and um, have a nice day. Thank you for watching. Uh, till the next video lesson. Bye.